Okay, next up we're doing QRS axis. So we're doing EKG. We've gone through several several steps at this point. We've talked about disorders that can be diagnosed, conduction cycle, atomic triangle. What are the leads? How do they pick up the voltage changes? And if you have not watched those other videos, you might want to watch those. Because we're jumping in right now to something called the QRS axis. The QRS axis is basically the major axis that voltage is traveling through the ventricles. If we were to look at an actual EKG or ECG trace. This is Q, this is R, and this is S. So we're looking at the direction that the voltage is going as it goes through this part of the, the ECG. And usually, The QRS axis goes from the right atrium towards the left ventricle. It goes in that channel direction. Now, one of the things that we have to clarify a little bit is we've talked about Eindhoven's triangle and we've talked about the augmented leads. And sometimes those leads are expressed radially. And we have to talk about that now because we want to understand when I say something's at zero degrees or something's at 180. This is in an additional video. We can start at zero, which is due east. 30, 60, 90, 120, 150. We also go in the counterclockwise direction, only now we go, we call them negative numbers. So this is minus 30, minus 60, minus 90, minus 120, and minus 150. And so the QRS axis is usually given in terms of those numbers. And again, a normal QRS axis should be heading in this direction. Technically normal can be anywhere from minus 30 to plus 120. So normally this arrow will be over here somewhere. When would it not be? Well, let's just talk about a couple of examples. Let me just draw. Up. So I want to talk about three examples. I want to talk about, first of all, what would it mean if the QRS axis was in this direction? One of the things we talked about when we were doing ECG is what this axis is, is actually the sum of multiple voltages. So the EKG is picking up the sum of all the voltage changes at once. What this would mean is there's more voltage heading in this direction than there is in this direction. And that could be for two reasons could mean that there's hypertrophy on the side. There's more muscle on the side, which is creating more of a voltage change on the side, so it's pulling the axis in this direction. Or you could have an influx on the side. So basically this axis is kind of like a tug of war between the left and the right side of the heart and will shift towards the left side of the heart if there's either more muscle on this side or less muscle on this side. The way you'd get more muscle on this side would be hypertrophy. You could have something like mitral valve stenosis where it's hard to pump blood through the mitral valve and so this side of the heart develops a lot of excess muscle. And this is where you can pull the QRS axis on the side. Or draw dead tissue, or this tug of war is offset by death on this side. So infarct on the same tissue is done. The axis can shift in this direction for the same basic reasons. I mean, we gotta reverse things. Maybe we have hypertrophy on this side. Or we have an infarct. And so again, either we've added extra So now on balance, the tug of war favors the right side, so the QRS axis shifts in this direction. I did want to do one extreme. This is called this new purple. This is called the northwest axis. And this is something definitely you'll never really see. Maybe 
feel the cold pressure, you can't see trace because of humorous access. Again, it's a combination of voltage between these two axes and this one. It's like a tug of war. The only way to get this axis here would be to remove this muscle completely. And you'll notice that I've got the arrow pointing in this direction. So essentially, this all is not functional because of a massive heart attack that our QR axis shifts to the northwest. Okay, so how, how do you figure out really, really quickly where it is? If you want a basic introduction, go to let's go for F-Quip on a really kind of a nice animation. And it's called the frontal axis to map. actually rotate a circle around the heart and it'll change its orbit in CG as you rotate around. I want to just give you some simple rules. And the first simple rule is find the isoelectric medium. And isoelectric means it's essentially there's the same amount of voltage above and below. The reason we want to find that lead is because that lead is having the most difficulty seeing the voltage change. Remember, really, really briefly, if we were looking at lead 2, and it's just the heart. If the voltage is going with the lead, then it's going to be a big heart infection. On the other hand, if the voltage is running perpendicular to our lead, then we see isoelectric. And so by finding the isoelectric lead, what we're doing is we're finding that the voltage is traveling perpendicular to that lead. So QRS axis is perpendicular to the isoelectric lead. Technically, we don't know which way. So let's look on this trace. I pulled this trace from Wikipedia. It looks like ADL is our most isoelectric. It's not the same amount of voltage as there is above and below. Now, AVL is the minus 30 volt. So we know that our QRS axis is going to run perpendicular to this lead. And we don't know which way. It technically could go, and I'm just going to put this off to the side, it could be going in this direction. This direction, and that's a pretty big difference because this would be normal and this would be major trouble. The next trick is pretty easy once you get it, which is to figure out are we going in this direction or this direction, is to find another lead nearby, look at the EKG, and look to see if it's positive or negative. So I'm just going to pick up lead 2 is right here. If we're positive in lead 2, then that must mean. Could have also done. We could have also done AVF. AVF is right here. AV frontal. We come down here and look. AV frontal is positive. Therefore, we must be headed in this direction. If our QRS axis was heading in this direction, we'd actually expect the EQ to be negative, or we'd expect our AVF lead. 